Welcome to our lecture online. Our second example involves the very same situations we had on the first example with one difference. In this case, the capacitors are not the same size. The first capacitor is still a 2 microfarad capacitor, which is connected to a 20 volt battery and thus charging up with a charge of 40 microcoulombs. The second capacitor has no charge on it, but it's a 4 microfarad capacitor. Now you take the two capacitors, you disconnect this one from its battery, and you connect it together with this capacitor. So maybe what we'll do is we'll put a little leads on it like that. So what we're going to do now is connect these two capacitors together like this. And the same thing will happen as in the previous video. Some of the charge from the first capacitor is going to move over to the second capacitor. But since they're no longer the same size, C1 is not equal to C2, the amount of charge that goes across will now not be the same as before. You will not end up with the same amount of charge on both capacitors. So how much charge will you end up with on the first capacitor and how much charge will we end up with on the second capacitor? The approach is going to be the same. What we do know is, using Kirchhoff's rules, that if we go all the way around the circuit, the voltages must add up to zero. So we have a positive voltage going from there to there and a negative voltage going from there to there, which means that V1 minus V2 must add up to zero. And using the definition of capacitance, we know that the voltage therefore is the ratio of the charge divided by the capacitance. We can then say that Q1 being the final charge on this capacitor divided by C1 minus Q2 being the final charge on this capacitor, divided by C2, must add up to zero. What we can also say is that the total charge on the two capacitors must still equal the total initial charge you had, the 40 microcoulombs, which means that Q1 plus Q2 is going to be equal to the initial charge you had on capacitor 1, and we can say that Q1 plus Q2 is therefore going to be equal to 40 microcoulombs. What that means is as follows. I can replace C1 and C2 what they're equal to. C1 is 2 microfarads, C2 is 4 microfarads. And I can replace Q2 by what Q2 is equal to in terms of Q1. We can say that Q2 is equal to 40 minus Q1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the microcoulombs and microfarads just to get cleaner equations. We can do that because we know that this is indeed in terms of microcoulombs and this is going to be in terms of microfarads, so we just have numbers. So let's replace the numbers and see what we get. Q1 divided by C1, now C1 is 2 microfarads, so I put down the 2, minus Q2, which is going to be 40 microcoulombs, just drop off the microcoulombs, minus Q1 divided by C2, which is 4, and that equals 0. Now notice we have an equation with just one variable, Q1. So we're going to solve that, coming up here. We're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the lowest common denominator, which is in this case 4. So multiply both sides by 4. What we get here is we get 2Q1 minus 40 and then the minus times the minus would be plus Q1 is equal to 0 because 0 times 4 still gives you 0. Combining these together, moving the 40 across, we get 3Q1 is equal to positive 40 or Q1 is equal to 40 divided by 3 which is 13.33 and of course charge being microcoulombs. So that's the charge on the first capacitor. Now the second capacitor we'll get charge Q2, so we can say that Q2 is equal to 40 minus Q1, which is 40 minus 13.33, or 26.67 microcoulombs for Q2. And notice when you add them together, just to check, this plus this does indeed add to the initial 40 microcoulombs you started with, it just that two-thirds of that charge went to the second capacitor and one-third remained on the first capacitor. Now that makes sense because this quantity is exactly twice the amount of charge as this one. Since the second capacitor is twice as big, it has twice the capacitance for the same voltage across 
these capacitors, this capacitor can hold twice as much charge because it has twice the capacitance. And so that the ratio, the ratio of charge to capacitance will be the same on both sides or both capacitors. And that's how we solve a problem like that.